Hello friends, in this lecture I'll be talking about questionnaire design. Questionnaire design is a very critical and important step, step in business research process. Questionnaire is a data collection instrument which consists of a formalized set of questions for obtaining information from respondent. In other words, set of questions written in some logical order is termed as questionnaire. So questionnaire can be presented in the form of a hierarchy. So the question can range from management question to measurement question. So management questions are the question which are related to the symptoms or a manager is primarily interested in the, in the reasons why it is happening. So if the sales of a restaurant is going down, then the manager of the restaurant would be interested why sales are going down. Then it would be an example of management question. Whether it is going down because of the test of the food or not, and I am measuring the level of satisfaction or if I am asking the respondent to measure the, to rate the level of satisfaction of the test of the food on a scale of 1 to 10, then it would be a measurement question. So the, one of the purpose of converting measurement, management question into measurement question is through questionnaire. So management questions are being translated into research question, research questions are for being further translated into investigative question and investigative questions are fi final. Uh, translated into measurement question. So when you design a questionnaire you have to keep certain things in the mind. The first thing which you have to keep in your mind is that you have to define each and every statement and every question which you are asking from the respondent has to have some legitimate purpose of asking question. Now one, one way of doing it uh, defining is you use a filter question. For example a researcher want to study the impact of children's examination on parents productivity at work. If the questionnaire is administered to all employees then the employees who do not have children will not be able to provide the required information accurately and that would result into an error in the uh, response pattern. So in such a case filter question is required to ensure the respondent employees as a children. So example of filter question in this case could be do you have a children who are studying? If the answer is no then probably he is not a right set of respondent. So I'll exclude them. Similarly, you have to choose which form of response you want, whether you want a structured response or unstructured response. Structured response, you have specified the set of responses alternative. These questions have a standard response format. On the other hand, if you are using an open-ended question where the res respondent can articulate the reply, then it would be an unstructured uh, questions. One of the common ob uh, observations which, we, we, which we have in uh, des while designing the question is people use very complicated or what we call complex word or jargons. One should use simpler word. So which vectors are responsible for high attribution rate in a company? Select one or more. Bad leadership, unpleasant work, environment and so on and so forth. Now look at the word high attrition rate. You simply should word it like what are the reasons due to which the employee tend to leave a company? So we should not use uh, typical words or jargons. We should use simpler words. Similarly, we should not use ambiguous words. For example, often, seldom, rarely. What is often for you may, may, may not be often for me. So how often do you go to beauty salon? So what is often for one may not be often for other. So another approach or the better approach could have been how often do you go to a beauty salon twice a week, once a week, twice a month, once a month. That would be specific and that, that can be quantified. We should also avoid leading question. Most people who have better oral hygiene think brushing twice a day is good. Do you think brushing twice a day is important? Obviously, if you are making the mind of the respondent in such a manner that you are only showing the positives of brushing twice a day, then obviously the respondent would say, well, I would like to brush twice a day. Similarly, life is God's gift. If we can't give life to anyone, we have no right to take away life from anyone, whatever the reason may be. Do you think taking away lives of criminal in the form of capital punishment should be practiced? Well, who is going to say no? Because... Uh, uh, you are already giving the negative consequence of you, you do not have a uh, no right to take life of somebody then obviously you get a response which is biased so we should avoid leading question 
Hell, the whole agenda here is to ask whether the capital punishment should be practiced or not. So you should straight away ask whether the capital punishment should be practiced or not, rather than asking or rather than explaining the positive or negative associated with it. Similarly, don't make an implicit assumption. Do you prefer playing games on the mobile? Now here the implicit assumption is I do play games. So that that may not be correct. So you should not assume that the people prefer uh, people prefer play games. And uh, and then you are using the word prefer, so we sh- it's an implicit assumption. We should also avoid double barrel question. Do you like the freshness and taste of this drink? And the answer is yes or no. For if, if let's say if I I like the freshness but I do not like the taste of the drink, then what should I say? Yes or no? So you have clubbed actually two question into one question that is termed as double barrel question. We should also avoid generalization and estimate. How many units of detergent, detergent cake you sell in a year? Now imagine how somebody would be able to recall the number of detergent cakes sold in a year. That may be very difficult. So rather you should give a small interval. How many units of detergent cake you sell in a week? And whatever is the number you multiply it by 52. That would give you an estimate of what is the amount of sales in a per typical year. Well, you are designing the questionnaire, please make sure that you uh, you should use a funnel approach. Funnel approach here means you should use the broader question at the first and then coming to a specific question. So if you are asking about what are, what are my views on the uh, data connectivity of Geo, then rather than asking this question as first question, I should ask whether I use data whether I use mobile phone, then only coming to the geo. So you cannot have a situation where you talk about Reliance Geo first and then you say whether I use mobile data or not. So ordering of the question should be appropriate. Then the question layout and production, the questionnaire should be short. A typical survey should last not more than 10 minutes. So you should use the coding properly so each question should be coded and numbered properly and then it should have a multiple section. So if the first section is about demographic then you should level it as a demographic question. And if the second question is about customer satisfaction then, then you should let, label it as a customer satisfaction. And whatever question you have designed and whatever would be the uh, response pattern which would be uh, uh, data which you will be collecting you should always do a pilot study. Pilot study is administering the questionnaire on a small sample of respondent to identify and eliminate the potential issues in the questionnaire. Uh, so, in, even if you are doing a pilot study through, uh, I mean, even if you are doing a final study through online, but still make sure that the pilot is being conducted uh, in an impersonal manner because the purpose of pilot study is to check the consistency and the uh, wording and the sequence and difficulty level of the questionnaire. So pilot testing is must. Thank you very much.